I'm not a shoe reviewer, but today I'm gonna talk about shoes. Now that all of you have left. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm not gonna try to pretend that I'm like Kofuzi or Seth James Moore, people that review shoes like formally. I don't know enough about them, but I will share what I love about these shoes that On Running sent to me. They did not pay me to make this video. It's not sponsored by them. They just sent me these shoes to use and they had no expectations of me reviewing them or anything, but I did wanna talk about them because I've really been enjoying them. I never really thought I would like On Running or these kinds of shoes because it did look like they were gimmicky with their little pods, the little uh, squishy guys. But after a few races and the racers and a lot of training and the monsters, I'm pretty stoked on them, I'm not gonna lie. For years I've been training in Hoka's, Clifton 7, Clifton 8, Mach 4 last year, uh, all very, very enjoyable shoes. But I can pretty safely say at this point, the Cloud Monster is one of my favorite daily trainers I've ever run in. According to Strava, I have 81 miles in the monsters so far. So nearing that 100 mile mark and they're holding up quite nicely. Obviously can't say if they'll hold up over 200 miles because I haven't run them that long yet but from friends that do have them and have run in them they say that they have and that's pretty awesome because I assumed that these pods would just kind of like break down over time but they feel like really firm I don't know so we'll see over time something I really love about this trainer is that it is pretty wide in the forefoot over here and there's just obviously a lot of cushion I looked up the specs on this it has a six millimeter drop and they have some of that same kind of technology of the forward roll to kind of propel you forward and so they kind of market this as they said a slow 5k to like a 20 mile long run type of shoe that's a really far range I would kind of put it in the camp for me at least anything that's easy anything that's recovery anything that's medium long Long distance but I don't really plan on wearing this for any kind of like tempo workouts or interval workouts 400 800 meter mile repeat that's gonna be faster shoes shoes that are more designed for that kind of speed some superficial components I love the colorways that they offer I didn't know if I was gonna like this one they just sent me this colorway and I actually really dig it I think it's super unique and I think the colors that they choose are really cool not just always the neon colors that a lot of running brands use and I love the experience of training in the monster so much that I actually asked them to send me the cloud surfer as well which I I've heard rave reviews about from people that it's just an awesome daily trainer shoe as well. But I think that one's more in the camp of like middle to a little bit faster. So maybe I would use that for more tempo workouts as well. The first time I put them on, it's just one of those experiences where if, if you had a shoe that's comfortable, you put it on, you're like, oh dang. And it literally felt like the upper was hugging the top of my foot. Like I don't like when people use the word pillow or pillowy when they talk about shoes, but that's exactly how it felt. It literally just felt like I was being embraced by a pillow on the top of my foot, which is, Special. Swiss engineering, didn't mention that. Got that nice little Swiss logo. And then yeah, it just feels super soft. Like the, the foam feels very soft, but strike feels great in it. And overall just very much enjoyed the shoe. Now to be perfectly honest, I don't feel the same way about the Cloud Boom Echo 3, just being fully honest. I have now raced a 10K in this shoe. Uh, last weekend I raced a 10K in it and I did a 5K time trial with my friend Clark in this shoe as well. I don't think I've put it through any other workouts or anything. I might've tried it on one other time and run, you know, just to see how it feels. It feels like a combination of a few shoes I've had in the past. Now, before I break that kind of down, um, this is like their premier racing shoe is what it seems like in marathon distance, half marathon distance. It has a carbon fiber plate and you can kind of see it through their little pod thing here. And they don't have the same sort of pods that they have in their trainers in this racing shoe, just these tiny little guys in the front where you can see the carbon fiber plate right there. It feels very reminiscent of the Endorphin Pro 3, which I'm very prone to with racing marathons in that this rocker in the front feels really drastic like that one as well. So it has kind of that falling forward effect when you put it on. But when you hold the shoe, it definitely feels light. It doesn't feel as light as other racers that I've had in the past. I don't know the exact weight. Maybe we can look it up and put it on the screen. Uh, but it does feel just really firm. This mesh kind of material feels like kind of nothing I've experienced before except it has felt really breathable when I've run in it. I assumed when I put these things on that it would feel really stiff and really firm because like do kind of a bend test, it like it's, it's stiff. I was surprised to feel that when I put it on, it did feel pretty squishy and the foam is pretty reactive, which is good. One thing I dislike about it that I do really like about on the Endorphin Pro 3 is that the toe box is a lot wider in the Saucony. This one feels really narrow, like when I raced in the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2s. Very narrow toe box and you can see it. It's really narrow in the front as well. See in comparison to the Monster, very, very different fit. And for me, whether it's because I'm an idiot or not, please put in the comments, if I get dead toenails in a marathon race, do I need to go half size up or half size down? 
please let me know and um, forgive me for not knowing that and reviewing shoes online. But with narrow shoes like the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 that I wore in New York in 2021, I had a lot of dead toenails. It felt like my toes were just really jammed up in that box. Whether that was the right size shoe for me, I always wear an 11. I know it differs from brand to brand, but maybe I need an 11 and a half or a 10 and a half. Please let me know in the comments. But I think in general, I'm always going to prefer a little bit of a wider toe box in a racing shoe if I can get it. The Pro 3 also feels a lot more squishy uh, with the foam. It just feels like much more pillowy than this. This feels like much more of a firm ride, even though it does have some of that resistance and squish. One thing Kofuzi put in his review, which is really interesting, is that the insole in here has these like little vertical, sorry, horizontal, can these kind of not pull out? I'm scared, it feels like it's glued in there. I don't wanna, maybe we can sort of see in here. There's these horizontal lines on that insole that are rubber, I think, but they're grippy, which is super interesting. And one thing I didn't like about that was I raced in wet conditions and it felt like I was on the edge of getting blisters on my feet because of that stickiness on the inside of the shoe with my foot being totally wet. I don't know, kind of feeling different about that. Feels pretty interesting. Obviously your foot's not slipping around in there. I didn't fall on any of the pavement out there, but I was really taking turns very, very carefully because I know a lot of racing shoes don't have a ton of grip. And it's a 9.5 millimeter drop, which I think is pretty standard in a racing shoe. The road running style is fast. Anyway, I don't mean to crap on the shoe, really. I, I really have enjoyed it. I've gotten I've gotten two PRs in it now. I've never formally raced a 5K, but I ran it in 1707 faster than any other 5K I have before. And then I did a time trial of the 10K last spring, and I beat that time by about 30 seconds in this last race with a 35-35. For those reasons, I'm pretty stoked on it. I'll keep doing shorter races in them if I can, but I might transition this over to a training shoe and do a lot of my tempo and interval work in it now, which is what's really cool about these types of shoes and what you'll hear me talk about about shoes on this channel if I ever review them is that I care more about the philosophy of like how you're investing in the shoes and how you're treating them and how you're using them over time. I've been trying to extend shoes for longer periods of time, seeing people use shoes in the 400, 500, 600, mile range and pushing them to that point. Obviously with the caveat that you need to make sure you're not getting injured from you know using the shoe for way too long. But I am currently using a lot of my old racing shoes to do interval workouts, to do speed workouts because of the benefits they have with the carbon fiber plate and the foam and the lightness, even if they're not performing to their optimal performance, like in the first 200 miles, 150 miles that they're usually prorated for to race in. This will be an amazing workhorse moving into next year for speed work, and I'm sure I will race a few more things in it. Maybe even put them on for my half marathon in September, we'll see. But story of the day, out of these two, I am obsessed with the Cloud Monsters. If you get an opportunity to get a pair of these, I highly recommend them. I do uh, wanna get another pair eventually, maybe in the all white colorway, because I really like that a lot. I hope this was helpful or interesting, and I hope you learned at least something or made a decision on it because I know these shoes are really talked about a lot these days. On is growing like crazy. It's just really cool to see a brand do that. Leave any comments down below, any questions you might have that I might be able to answer with my limited knowledge. I'll catch you next time for all the runs. See ya.